No matter how much we know or think we know about God and His Word, there is always more. Today on Always More, Rebecca Keener discusses how the Holy Spirit is relevant to our everyday lives. He is the one who is our comforter in times of need and gives us the power to live a victorious life. Now, here's Rebecca. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Always More TV. We've got a power packed 30 minutes ahead of Bible study. It may be the most powerful time of your day. So thank you for tuning in. And today's lesson is on how the Holy Spirit trains us to reign. Doesn't that sound powerful to you? I believe God gave me this message just for you. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll get right into our lesson. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for all those who are joining us today, every household represented. Father, we pray your blessings, your favor, your goodness, Lord, your mercy, your blessing as never before to shower down on every family. Lord, we pray for help, for financial blessing, God. We pray that you would put a hedge around about them and that every Every weapon, every assignment of the enemy be canceled against them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, today we are talking about, as I said, the Holy Spirit trains us to reign. This is a message that the Lord put on my heart back in uh, the very first of March of this year, which this is the year 2020 as I'm taping this. And um, as some of you know, as I've, I've communicated before the number 20 stands for redemption and so 2020 is the num is is symbolic of double redemption amen and those of you who know what we've already been through in 2020 what a promise to hang on to that we are going to see God's redemption in 2020 as never before isn't that wonderful uh, my my mom was saying to me and reminding me that um, there has not been a double numbered year since 1919, and I think that was a year before or after, or during a, a, a pandemic or an epidemic. I'm not sure which, and and um, so it's very interesting that now we're in 2020 and we are facing very similar challenges. And um, also, there will not be another double-numbered year again until the year 2121. And how many of you out there with me will say, I will not be here then, praise the Lord. We will be raptured in glory, hallelujah. So I'm looking forward to that day. And it may be sooner, we don't know, because Jesus Christ is coming soon. And so you get ready and you get excited and you know that God wants to train you to reign. We're not just here on this earth just to get run over and to uh, just to hobble our way through and try to make it. Amen. We are here to reign for Jesus Christ and to uh, dominate Satan, to, t- to take dominion over him. Uh, recently he spoke to me that we were to annihilate him through the blood of Jesus Christ that he's already done everything he's going to do on the cross through the blood of Jesus and do you know one little drop one little molecule of the blood of Jesus could cure the entire world if we as his church as as his bride will just begin to uh, stand in agreement together and to Uh, plead the blood of Jesus and bind up the forces of the enemy and to rebuke him and to cast him out as Jesus modeled when he was here on earth, then we will uh, see total victory in this situation manifest. We've already been given the victory. We're just here on earth to to enforce it. Amen. So that's a wonderful thought to think about. Our, Our main text today is in 2 Timothy 3. 16 and 17 i'm reading out of the king james version and it says this all scripture is given by inspiration of god and we know that was through the holy spirit's breath he is our inspiration and this program and this study is all about the holy spirit we've taken um, now 50 over 50 programs almost 60 programs talking about the precious holy spirit and how he inspires us 
And this is his inspired word. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. And how many of you have been going through a little bit of correction from the Holy Spirit in the last few days? Amen. I know I have. For instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped. Everybody say that with me. Thoroughly equipped. Amen. Just say this with me. I am thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now, other versions of that same verse, I believe the Christian Standard Bible and some other versions, will translate that word instruction where it says uh, that the word is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. And that is translated as training in righteousness. When you think about uh, Titus chapter 2, the Titus 2 woman, we like to call it, she trains up the godly women were instructed by Paul to train up the younger women and to bring them up in righteousness. And training is a little bit different than teaching. Training is getting in the kitchen and letting them crack the eggs and get the mess all over the countertop and the flour everywhere. And I'm just giving you a little example here. But training is getting in the trenches with the people and letting them make mistakes and letting them just begin to learn how to walk in the Spirit. And I'm so thankful for women of God in my life, my mother and others who have trained me up in righteousness. My father trained me up in righteousness and, and taught me the Word of God. And so many teachers, pastors, preachers down through the years have trained me up, trained you up, and isn't it a blessing to know that we are being trained in righteousness? Why? We're being trained to reign. And we're not here just to allow the perilous times that we know we're going to face. Jesus himself said that we, in the last days, we will have perilous times. We will have earthquakes in diverse places. There will be wars and rumors of wars. There will be plagues and famines. And all these things, this birth pain, and then the birth pains would come. And we believe right now we're in those birth pains before pangs before the uh, coming of Christ. Now I'm a mama who has been through birth pains three times. Three times I have had uh, children, had uh, my sons, and um, you get in those last few uh, hours of birth pains, and I'm I'm one of those. I have to salute my sisters out there who went through natural childbirth with no epidural. You are a superwoman, amazing, and you had to be empowered by the Holy Spirit to do that. I had an epidural, and I was the one yelling for it um, early on as in the in the birthing process. And um, you know, so uh, we 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 have to be those who discern that we are in those times, that time of birthing, the Lord is coming back. He is coming soon. Those birth pains, as some of you moms know what it's like. And it is um, a, a very, a very challenging, and we'll just leave it at that. It's very challenging. But we see here that the word of God, this word that you and I study and have made our life, our life's mission to learn, to memorize, to meditate upon is effective for correction and for instruction, that training in righteousness, building us up to be trained in righteousness, to lead in righteousness. We live in a fallen world where there's so much evil and people don't even know what it means to be righteous or, or to uh, be holy or to live in a righteous manner. We live in a day where lawlessness abounds. And so we are, as the church of Jesus Christ, and I really am speaking to those of you in the body of Christ right now, because we are the church. The church is not a building. The church is us. It's you and me. We are those people who are the restraining force here on earth because the Holy Spirit is in us and he is restraining the evil on earth. And he is 
bringing forth the light of righteousness upon the earth so that others may see Jesus Christ and desire him and want him and invite him into their life. And right now we've got to go after every soul we possibly can. We've got to snatch people out of the fires of hell. And this is the time that, that God has called us to do it because again, he is coming soon. But we can't do it if we're not trained. We've got to be trained. I don't care if you're uh, 10 years old or you're 100 years old. We're still in training. If we're still on this earth breathing, we are training for reigning in Jesus Christ. And um, we look at Proverbs 22 and 6. You know the scripture. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And I pray, Mom, that you take comfort in that particular scripture today and that you remember that all the training, all the love, all the manners and the honor and the word and the prayer that you have poured into your child, you're going to see it. You're going to see fruit of it. You just hang on, Mama. And don't you get discouraged and don't you despair because there's your promise. If you train up that baby in the way they should go when they're old, they're not going to depart from it. Amen. Hebrews 4 and 11 says, All discipline for the moment seems not to be joyful. And I better hear a good amen on that. But sorrowful, yet to those who have been trained by it afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. And, you know, that's how I feel. Um, I, during this whole quarantine time, I, I really just set aside in my calendar 40 days of repentance, just straight every day, just, Lord, put your finger on anything in my life that you don't like, anything that is displeasing to you, anything, large or small, God, I want to repent. I want to change my ways. I want to do a, a, a whole turnaround and go in the opposite direction. And I want to be uh, corrected by you. It's not fun. It's, sometimes it's sorrowful. When we see ourselves in, in a fallen state uh, and we see how far we are from, from what God has for us to be, sometimes it's sorrowful. It, it hurts, you know. But God, he wants to bring us up from glory to glory, glory to glory. So as we repent before him and we renounce those sins and we say, God, Cleanse me, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Take the coal, cleanse my lips. Here I am. You know, I have to repent so much. Even this morning, I didn't sleep well last night. And I was so just irritable and ill and gr ill, as we say in the South. Grumpy, you know, and my husband was just being so sweet and kind as he normally is and helping me and helping me to get down here. And I was just kind of acting grumpy. And, you know, I had to repent. I had to repent. I said, I'm sorry I've acted like this. I ask your forgiveness. Most of all, I asked the Lord's forgiveness. But you know what? After you repent, you don't have to take 30 days of like fasting and sackcloth and ashes on your head to make it right with God. You just say, I repent. I, re I renounce that. And then you receive the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Isn't that great? He just brings it to you. You know, I was thinking about uh, heroes of the faith who have been, um, they have been trained, they submitted themselves to training. And I wanted to give some of those to you. David said, um, you, tr Lord, you, tr you train my hands for war. Isn't that a powerful scripture? And so David had to be trained on how to be king, how to legislate, how to lead the people of Israel. And he submitted himself to the training of the Holy Spirit. And so too, we need to submit ourselves. Holy Spirit, I ask you to train me. I ask you to train me in your word, train me in my life and my walk, and let me be more like you. I think about Esther and in Esther chapter uh, 2 and 12, it talks about how she had 12 months of total preparation and training to be queen. She had six months with oils, and I think I'd sign up for that. 
Hmm, I don't, I don't know. What about you? But I think I'd sign up to go to a spa for about 12 months. And um, then she had six months with perfumes and preparations for beautifying women. Isn't that great? I'd have those facials done. I would, I'd have it all. Let me tell you, I'll just have the works. Well, I think, I think Esther had the work. She was, she was a young girl. You think about that. And then God raised her up to save all of the Jewish people. And she went to the king I was studying in Esther the other day, I think like six times, and asked him, you know, for uh, him to reverse the decree. She asked for Haman to be hung, for his sons to be hung. And she asked for all those related in all the provinces to be annihilated. She went for the throat of the enemy, let me tell you. And But you know what? She had to go through that process of training to get to be that valiant uh, warrior and leader and knowing how to take out the enemy. Amen. Daniel was trained in Babylon. We've read about uh, him. He was trained for three years, and um, he had to be trained in order to be in the king's service, and he had to be trained by the Holy Spirit to continue to pray three times a day, even though he was told he couldn't, and he was not supposed to. Who do you think trained him in that way? It was the Holy Ghost, and then <clears throat> excuse me, Paul had to be trained. He was educated at the feet of Gamaliel. And, um, and then after he, uh, he was Saul, he became Paul. He was trained by Ananias, who instructed him in the way of Jesus Christ. So we see these people who we love to read about all throughout the world, there was a process of training that they had to go through. I know some of you listening to me at home today, you've been through some training. You've been through some stuff. You've been through some processing. And um, I have too. And it doesn't, it doesn't seem joyful at the time, does it? But the Bible says, and we just read, it yields the, the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Now, to reign means that we have royal dignity, that we operate in a kingdom, and we know we're not part of just one little government or one little church or one little faction of the church. No, we're part of a kingdom. Everybody say, I am a kingdom person. Amen. <clears throat> and um, so we have to, to learn the kingdom ways, and we learn that through the word of God. Revelation 5 and 10 says, that God has, uh, he has made us unto God kings and priests, kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. Now, I want to talk to you because our time is limited, but I want to tell you three areas we've got to be trained. If we're going to stand strong in these perilous days that we're in, and, and, and with all of our heart, we want to be this is the time we want Jesus to shine through us as, as never before. We must be trained in our spirit, our soul, and our body. We're comprised of these three parts. We've talked about this many times, and you students of the Word, you know this. We must be trained in our spirit, just like those that I mentioned, Esther, Daniel, David, Paul. They were trained spiritually. They were trained in the Word, and we must learn how to um, we must learn how to stand up for fear, and we must be trained in godliness. First uh, Timothy four seven through eight. While bodily training is of some value, you know some people like to discount bodily training altogether. Well, there it is in the scripture. That means we don't have to do any physical training. It says it's of some value. Amen. We'll get to that. I'm going to meddle all in your business. Uh, but um, godliness is of value in every way. So first, we must be trained spiritually. Just like I've said in a previous program, we get the good news in our, in our body, in our spirit first. Get the good news in our eyes and in our ears first before we get out in the world and get hit with bad news. Amen. So we must be trained in our spirit. 
to, to operate in the Holy Spirit, to learn how to walk in the Spirit, to learn how to read the Word every day, to learn how to pray. You know, some of you may have been Christians your whole life and you don't even have a prayer life. You know what? Allow the Holy Spirit to train you to pray without ceasing every day. Just pray as you go. Pray in the Holy Ghost. If you don't know what to pray, pray in tongues and allow Him to pray through you. And allow the Holy Spirit to train your spirit so that you're in a position to reign and to rule over Satan and all of the darkness that's trying to overwhelm us and take out the church at this time. We must be trained in our soul. And we know how to do this according to Romans 12 and chapter 2 be re, to be uh, transformed by the renewing of our mind. And we do that through the Word of God. And as we get in the Word, He gives us a sound mind. You know, sometimes the enemy will try to make you feel like you're just going crazy. You're, you know, you're, this is just an insane time that you're living in and you're just going crazy and, you know, you need help. Well, how do we keep that sound mind is we stay in the word and we renew our mind and it gives us that mental acuity and the mind of Christ. Everybody say, I have the mind of Christ. Amen. That's why we put on the helmet of salvation. And then we have to be trained in our will to obey God. You know, um, it says, if you are willing and obedient, the word says, you will eat the good of the land. And I, I want to eat the good of the land. I, I don't want any catastrophe and trauma and drama. No, I want the good. Amen. That doesn't mean we won't have persecutions. We, we are told that we will live in a time where there will be tribulations and persecutions. But if we're willing and we're obedient, God will preserve us and he will keep us. And we will eat the fat, the good of the land. Amen. That's a good scripture to hold on to. And then Hebrews 5 and 14 says to have our senses trained. That's part of our soul, our senses, to discern good and evil. You know, we need that just on social media and what we're looking at, what we're, what we're taking in, our eyes, our ears, our, our, um, our spirit. We have to be trained by the Holy Spirit. And then lastly, we have to be trained physically. And uh, this is very important at this time. And I'm going to do a whole program on our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit next week so i want you to tune in next week we're going to take a whole week just to talk about how god the holy spirit wants to even train you physically he wants your body to be strong and healthy he gave his very life for it he took stripes upon his back so that we could walk in health and have victory and dominion over every sickness and infirmity and affliction that would try to come on us and um to realize and to know our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Back in the fall of last year, I, I heard the Holy Spirit speaking to me in that still small voice. I heard him say several times, I'm going to make you a lean, mean, fighting machine. And when I heard that, I thought, well, that is really odd. That's an odd word. And But you know what? I have been on a little health journey for the last uh, six months or so where the Lord has had me eating uh, more whole food nutrition and exercising and doing weights and taking care of myself where I wasn't doing that and God is training me and he's teaching me well I didn't know back in the fall that we were going to be facing a global pandemic or a situation like what we're in now uh, and God needed my body to be strong. He needs your body to be strong so that we can carry the anointing of the Holy Ghost and we can do warfare and we can do great and mighty exploits on the earth for his kingdom. You know, he, 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 it's difficult for him to use us if we're just, just so weighed down with fat and flesh and illness and disabilities where we're not giving our body to the Holy Ghost. 
And even those of you who maybe have been disabled in some way, maybe in, in the in, um, military, you know what? God wants your body strong. He wants my body strong. He wants uh, those who suffer with disabilities. He wants you strong and healed and whole. And he will perfect us. He will do it. He will train us. So I just want to encourage you with those words today to allow the Holy Spirit to come and to train you. You know, we are not victims of pandemics and plagues that Jesus spoke of. We are not, I want to speak this over to you today. You are not a germaphobe. I am not a germaphobe. We are not phobes. We are not phobic people. No, the Bible says perfect love casts out all fear. We are full of the love of Jesus Christ. And we're being trained to reign right here on this earth for his glory and his honor. And you know what? The only way we can be trained to reign, the first step is to give your life to Jesus Christ. If you've never done that, I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. Today's the day. We're not promised tomorrow. And if you don't know him as Lord and Savior, I want to, you to know and be assured I'm going to heaven. If I were to die today, I would be in eternity with him. Just say this words with me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Change me. Forgive me of my sins. Give me a new start. I want to make you Lord and Savior. I give you my life in Jesus' name. Now, if you prayed that prayer, we want to hear from you. I want you to write in. And if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, right now is the time. We need him more than ever to train us to reign in this life to stand up and be those strong, bold Christians like Daniel in a lion's den. Amen. Just say, Holy Spirit of the living God, baptize me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and train me in righteousness in Jesus' name. And he'll do it. You know, I'm so glad you joined me today. And I know that when we all get to heaven, we're going to just be able to rejoice together and see all that God has done in us and through us. And I just want to encourage you, if you would like to partner with Always More TV, we would love to have you as a partner. And every soul goes to your account. And so we just want to encourage you, go to our website, alwaysmoretv.org. You'll find the information there. We have podcasts. We have blogs. We have other material to encourage you. And we know it will build you up in your faith and train you in reigning. God bless you. We'll look forward to seeing you next time on Always More TV. This program is brought to you by Heritage Christian Fellowship Incorporated and faithful friends like you. Your tax-deductible donation to Heritage Christian Fellowship Incorporated, founded 1974, will be used to support this program. To find out more about how you can be a part of sending the gospel through Always More, contact us at alwaysmoretv.org.